We have these two things right here. We have aragonite and we have a seashell. The seashell... <laughs> and I'm a geologist and in this video we're gonna learn about minerals. Minerals are kind of like the building blocks of rocks so if you don't know anything about minerals it's gonna be kind of hard to understand what the heck is going on when it comes to rocks or rock forming events. If you enjoy this video please give it a like and subscribe to my channel so you can see any other geology topic videos I post in the future. Minerals are a very big part of our everyday life. For example gypsum is a mineral that sheetrock is made out of there is lithium in the batteries in our phone or our computer, which you may be watching this on. There's copper in our electrical wires, cooking pans, pipes in some people's houses. There's quartz in our watches. And that's just a few examples of the many ways that minerals are important and common in our everyday life. Minerals are also present and very important in the foods we eat. For example, zinc and magnesium and iron. But geologists have a different definition of minerals when it comes to how they are related to geology. The geologic definition of a mineral is a naturally occurring inorganic solid that has a definite chemical composition and an ordered internal structure. Now let's break that down into the five characteristics. Number one, naturally occurring. This is pretty self-explanatory. It just means that it occurs in nature and it's not made by humans. So if all humans just disappeared from the earth one day, minerals would continue to be made and exist. The second characteristics of minerals in geology is that they are inorganic. This means that they are not made from living materials or something that used to be living. For example, we have aragonite and a seashell. These are made out of the same elements. They have the same chemical formula, but they are not both minerals. A seashell is not a mineral because it was made from a living organism and aragonite was not made from a living organism. It was made from geological processes. The third characteristic of a mineral is that it must be solid. This means that the mineral must be in a solid phase state at standard temperature and pressure. So right now these are solid. Mercury for example is not a mineral because it is liquid at room temperature. The fourth characteristic of all minerals is that they have to have a definite chemical composition. All minerals are made out of elements from the periodic table, so there are atoms of these elements that make up the minerals. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks, and atoms are the building blocks of minerals. Every single time a mineral exists, it has to have the same proportions of elements. The chemical formula of quartz is SiO2. This means that there is one atom of silicon for every two atoms of oxygen. I think a good way of thinking about this would be thinking about a family recipe. You try to follow a family recipe the same time every single time you make it so that it ends up the same thing every single time. So if you took your grandma's chocolate chip cookie recipe and you said, I'm gonna put two cups of sugar instead of two cups of flour, it's probably gonna be a very different cookie. The ratios of that cookie recipe are always the same every single time you make it so that you get the same product every time, the same product that your grandma had. The fifth and last characteristic of all minerals is that they have to have a definite internal structure. So if I took two oxygen atoms and one silicon atom, I can arrange these in a couple different ways. And this becomes more complicated with the more atoms that there are in that mineral. So because of all these possibilities of the ways that atoms can arrange themselves, we have things like graphite and diamond. They are made of the same element carbon, but they have very different arrangements of those carbon atoms that make them completely different minerals. The bonds that hold together a diamond are much stronger than the bonds that hold together graphite. A great way to demonstrate that minerals have an internal structure is optical calcite. If you take a piece of clear calcite and you put it over a piece of paper with writing on it, you'll see double what the writing really is on the paper. This is because the light travels through the mineral, through that internal structure, and it's reflected so that when you look at it, you see that reflection, you see the double vision. There are six crystal systems in mineralogy that explain the ways that atoms can arrange themselves. We can take a mineral and put it into one of these six groups to explain the pattern that the atoms have arranged themselves in. So because we have so many elements, there are a lot of different minerals in the world. A couple of the most abundant elements in Earth's crust are silicon and oxygen. 
Because of this, a lot of minerals have these elements in them. A few of the very important rock forming minerals are feldspar, quartz, olivine, as well as carbonate minerals like calcite. That's pretty much it. I hope that this gave you a pretty good understanding of the basics of minerals and thank you for watching. Thank you.